uh, welcome back guys this uh, in the previous one previous second part of my video I mainly you know focus on how the the persisting of the data from angle JS to to um, you know um, to web API and eventually the link to SQL goes into backend database in this one I'll be focusing mainly on how to how the delete operation works okay so let me show you this delete is pretty straightforward I have a this is very nice message saying hey are you sure are you are you sure if you cancel nothing really happens you know it's always a good idea to provide hint to the user what he's trying to do sometimes maybe what they're trying to do is not really <laughs> so anyway if if they read if they say okay this information is you know deleted from the system and if this message comes up and everything is good right but how it really happens like that so okay just to um you know, sometimes it's a really, really good idea to even play with the browser. I like the, of course, you know, m these days all the browser, Firefox, Safari. Uh, well, uh, no, I don't use Safari that much, but like Chrome and IE 11, all of them have really cool feature. You can see what's really going on in in terms of request and response level, right? Let's look at that feature. Okay, so I want to see the network. Okay, what really happens when I do delete here, okay? So, I'm going to say delete here. And that, see what, what happened here. Now, let's look at this guy here. This, when I did delete, this is the, this is the web API that got invoked, that got called, as you can see right here. And then, it has very nice information. Is, let's look at it to understand it better, right? So um, here's a requested URL. So basically, when I delete it, I have ID corresponding to this record here, this row, and that ID got passed to the web API, to my web API URL, or rested URL, right? So here's the API, here's my you know, controller, stock market, and this is my um, you know, the accent method, and this is the ID, ID to be deleted from the backend. And this is the request. And then we can see what the response from the server was. In this case, there was no response because I, I was, you know, if you look at into my, um, delete, daily market service, in my, um, my controller, look at the delete method. I didn't really return anything here. So that it just returned no response. That's that's what that's why it is saying that. Anyway, it's always you know it's a good idea too. Oh, the the, and then of course you know this is the first thing it deleted, and as soon as it delete, but it has to rebind the grid right because uh, it it has, re has to rebind those existing grid because otherwise the your change would not be reflected in the UI right away. So that is for the second request here. In the second request, as you can see, it pulls out some data, some JSON data from the server. See, this all the data that came out from the backend database. And this is the response from the server. Because the first one is, of course, uh, if you look at the header, that was a get request. The previous one was, of course, the delete request. As you can see, the, the request method is delete. In this case, the request method is get. Okay, that is the other thing I would like to, you know, uh, I wanted to share with you guys. Okay, once that is done, let's go into our, um, okay, here, into marker first. So here, um, so basically, you know, if you guys are not really, I have a basically overall I have a two grid here whole application is divided into I'm using this bootstrap the first deep the first container takes a, like the four that's the eight times four 32 and some number 32 30 32 maybe uh, I would say roughly you know um, 35 pixels is taken by this guy here and the remaining is eight eight of those grids taken by the second deep. 
it's a very nice they uh, nicely provide this feature and other thing is like it is uh, very very uh, responsive so as you go in here like this you know they just sift it back like that kind of cool just automatically the, the bootstrap framework provides that feature to you okay so this is my second grid that's where all my grid information I mean when I say grid this is where all the data is located of course you know this is this is a basic binding and uh, what I would like to show you is the how to do a, how delete gonna work so just like you know ng click directive is set for the add I have a delete Math method here, and I also pass that whole information. It's still market daily is that object that's bind to that grid. I pass that information to it for um, for the each you know for each row. So now we go into our controller, and we already look at into. Now let's look into how to do delete. So. Um, just like add, we have delete method here, and also takes this stock market daily current version of system market current row, right? That information is here as a parameter to this function. And most important thing when you're deleting, you have to always make sure you know the ID, the, well, whatever the unique key for that for your object is there. In my case, it's of course the ID. I just want to make sure the ID is not undefined, it exists, and then it's not null and it just make sure that data type of this guy is a number if all of this is good and I ask the user in here are you sure you want to delete this record they said yes then basically I, I call my service hey service here is the method here is the ID for you <laughs> and go ahead and invoke that one when comes result comes out call, let me know and I'll call a success method and <coughs> I will do a, I will display the message and bind the grid okay so what happens here is basically now delete the stock market daily if you go into my uh, service right here I call the delete method here this is just the ID that comes in when these methods get invoked and this is the API into where into which I have and then of course you know this is the this is the basic uh, XML, basic XML HTTP request feature provided by the Angular JS. You know we are so used to using, uh, you know, the jQuery get when post. It's a similar kind of thing. So basic, all you need to provide is basically the endpoint of the URL of your REST service. Okay. So let's look it into our REST service. in our server side from client side to server side okay so the when the methods from the javascript gets invoked it, this is where it, it, it would call this method right here <coughs> excuse me and eventually this method calls my you know da that data provider and this is my uh, data provider right here using link to sql using the data con it create a new instance of the data context and then very first thing I have to do is just make sure there is a data I load the data by the given ID once I find that information I will say alright go ahead and delete and submit for this guy right here that you just obtained by the ID and everything is good go ahead and submit the changes that basically this two piece of li two liner code but I will say all three liner code because I have to this is the get right here, it gets the data from the backend database by the based on the ID and these two would delete the data. That is all. You know that is that is it that is all that I have guys. Um the the reason I have decided to share this one is it has a lot of things in because it has a uh, angle JS and other common thing is like you know um with uh, starting with the Visual Studio 2013, of course, you can you know add a web API and use web form. You know, we you know I know even though like ASP and MVC is so popular these days, and all of us use it, really love it. But at the same time, web form is not going anywhere too. I mean, like there is so many code out there, legacy code and everything, still written in web form. I mean, like even though 
MBC is great, but waveform is not that bad either. I mean, like in for 10 years, you know, we've been <laughs> writing a lot of code in waveform. Anyway, guys, I mean, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I